Welcome to the Tech Device Talk podcast. I'm your host, and this is John over here. Today, we will be hosting a pretty fun podcast, I think, mm -hmm. with a couple stories in here. We're also going to be talking about why we decided to start a podcast and also some news on the future of this channel going into the summer. So we've got a lot to cover today, so let's just get right into it. Why did I start a podcast? That's probably a good question. But I think I really just wanted... I actually wanted time for tech. If you look back at my channel, at like the older videos, which I don't recommend, but if you go back there and look at those, those like six or seven minute videos used to actually be podcasts with like a friend, except I heavily cutted those ones up. And so they looked not that great and they weren't too good. So I just decided to let now that I'm like more skilled in this area. I figured it it's a good time that I actually start a podcast where I just go long form, don't cut it as much, and we just have a bunch of stories that we get to talk about. And I think we've got a lot of good insights and opinions that we can get to share about some stories and stuff like that. So that was my main reason for wanting to start a podcast, but I think it should go pretty well. I also kind of talked to you earlier about the future of this channel, and I have some questions to kind of figure out. This summer, we are going to be revamping quite a bit of stuff going on. There's four main videos I wanted to talk about, and I guess like have every week, there's gonna be like four long form videos and then three YouTube shorts. And here's kind of their topics. Mondays would be, or I'm not gonna say like sp specific days for all of them, cause I'm not sure, but here's just what I'm thinking right now. Mondays would be some sort of a video where it'd be like inquisitive and asking a question towards something and going in depth on that topic. Then Wednesdays would be some sort of like mobile tech review, so whether it's laptops, phones, or other products or whatever, I'd feature like one of those and have it in there. And then Fridays, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's gonna be kind of a fun one I'm working on right now. But anyways, um, right now it's actually Friday as we are recording this podcast. I will have to edit it tonight and then it'll be uploaded tomorrow, which is Saturday morning as you guys are looking at it, or afternoon, depending on my speed and if I end up getting to it tonight or not but this is going to be coming out on Saturday. So that will be the third video, but back to that Friday video, that one will actually be one I'm trying to figure out how to work in, but it'll be about cars and have some sort of like mm -hmm. car tech segment. CNET used to do this thing on their like YouTube channel like five, six years ago with like Brian Cooley, he would do like a car tech segment. And I always thought that that stuff is pretty cool and if you've seen like videos from Marquez, he's been doing a lot of stuff too with um, like car videos on like the Mach-E and Porsche Taycan, Model S Plaid. He's got a lot of those things. So it's pretty cool to like see those and see all the tech inside. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of have to figure out more of the details with that on like how I'm actually supposed to get in contact, whether it's with dealers, manufacturers or whatever. But I know a couple friends that I can probably ask them to take their car for a day or so and just film whatever. It wouldn't even be that long, probably just like an hour, just film all the cool tech inside. But I want to get your thoughts on like, mainly, I tried talking with John on the phone a couple of days about this, so it was hard to explain like the concept of it, but I just need to figure out like what would make it special. So if any of you guys know in the comments below, then please, please let me know because I'm kind of stuck on what would make the podcast a special Thing, what would or not the podcast but the car show kind of thing like a special thing and how we can make it like tech oriented you know what let's go with this so john what are you interested in as far as like content i guess with like tech because you aren't he isn't actually that into tech which is almost why i wanted him on here just to kind of get somebody that's more just from like an average person user's perspective and mm -hmm. an average person to kind of come in here and talk about some of that stuff what would make, my question is like, what would make an average person want to watch like one of the car videos? Cause that one's kind of like a complete different subject. So it can be kind of tough. I feel like to get that audience to like want to see it, but like, how can I make it engaging or like, what can I do with that? Like you said, I'm not really a tech guy at all. I really know nothing about cars. So for the videos to be engaging, I feel like just some information about like the general models you're going to display as well as like why why it's important really like mm. why should i be interested in this yeah. or why what are you presenting to me that that you want to show me mm -hmm. 
I mean, I'm kind of planning on just, like, going... So my idea with it was to, um, like, basically get, like, a car or something and kind of introduce it, like, generally of, like, what it... Like, mm -hmm. the importance of it. And then I would start to go in-depth then a little bit more on, like, some of the cool features and whatever, like, cool stuff it has. And all that stuff would be, like, tech-related. So, like, whether it's infotainment inside or other things like that, I want to bring... I want to somehow showcase all of that stuff of out like out of the car but put it onto cameras and to videos that look good and that people would find kind of enjoyable or maybe useful if you're like trying to buy a car and you want to see like oh is this infotainment good so i want them to take away something useful from it but mm -hmm. for the people that don't really need to take anything like useful from it just to have something kind of fun and enjoyable to watch so i think it might be a little challenge to kind of blend some of those things together but again if any of you guys have any like questions about that or if you want to like give any opinions i am more than happy to hear some suggestions or anything do you have one yeah well just as a general recap you're just going to talk about the tech inside the vehicles right yeah yeah so it would just be like the tech inside of it for the most part i wouldn't here's the thing i don't want to do like a normal driving kind of review mm -hmm. i'm not as into those as like just seeing i'm mainly there for the tech i want to like look inside and be like all right what do you think about the screen inside what do you think about the charging network a lot of these vehicles would also be like electric ones i'm kind of hoping to move into that kind of area so just to make sure for someone like me who doesn't have the insight about all the different like features for each of the vehicles you're going to go in depth and explain everything that way i get a sense of why a certain car is better than another vehicle right? yeah i guess I'm, yeah maybe if i just take it to, into like that review perspective on like what's better and which one is better or worse. Mm -hmm. I think I should have some sort of like metric of scoring. That was something Doug Demir does like a Doug score thing for his cars. Oh. He has like the, he has his like feature, forks and features like segment. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I almost kind of want to like use something like that, but find more of like a tech twist to it. And so I want to do something there with that. That's honestly a really good idea. Just mm -hmm. so people get a sense of, you know, if it's good or not. Yeah. No, I will have to, I'll have to contact another friend who has a Chevy Bolt. That could be pretty fun. Yeah, that, <laughs> we'll have a lot of fun with that one, but you know, we'll have to see. And I think the main thing is just making one of them and getting kind of used to what, whatever kind of style it's going to be like. Because I like this is the same deal with this podcast. I wanted to figure out how can I make this podcast like different than other ones or better. I don't really know yet, so I'm just putting out this first one right now mm -hmm. just so I get a general idea of if it's good or not or like if people like this kind of stuff or if I should be doing long form content or what. So I don't know. I think I have to just try one out first and then do it again. So I'm basically again. just your guinea pig right now. <laughs> just going along with these weird experiments. Okay. Let's see channel. what you have. The summer should be pretty fun for this channel, but I don't get out of school for a couple more weeks. So yeah, don't expect too many more videos. You can probably expect another podcast since it only takes what, like, 30, 40 minutes probably to record this, and then I'll cut it up later and send it over. So I think that these should be produced a little more often just because mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to do. But, like, those car videos will definitely take some time, and it'll be kind of a learning curve mm -hmm. to see what works and what doesn't. So you just want words. plenty of time to make high-quality videos. You just don't want to rush on them. I don't want to rush on them, yeah. yeah that's a lot of the mine that I was doing recently were, like, time for text, as you can see on the channel. There are multiple of those right before I took a little break. Mm -hmm. And those are good and all, but I want to do like more in-depth stuff. Like the inquisitive ones, those ones are fun to make, but they take a lot of time to research them because I have to research them and write a script for it. Every Almost every video on the channel has a, some, some sort of script for it. Mm -hmm. And that stuff takes a lot of time. That's probably about half of the work I do is writing. Another like 10, 15% is filming it and like getting all the clips or whatever. And then another like 25% is probably editing <laughs> and then 10 more percent to like get it uploaded and make a thumbnail mm -hmm. and do those things. So there's a lot of work that goes into just the writing piece of it. And the narrative has to be, has to be something that I liked before mm -hmm. I can put it out. And I just wasn't really pleased with most of the results beforehand. So I just haven't been posting a whole lot recently. Mm -hmm. And this summer I just want to change that. And that's why we have four, four videos a week. I think would be pretty good. Any extra like YouTube shorts that I was talking about like a long time ago. 
way at the beginning. Yeah, I mm -hmm. forgot to mention those at all. Those are going to be kind of like filler videos almost, like in between the days that I don't post the larger videos. And so hopefully that will act as a way to bring in new viewers into the channel and so they can kind of see some more stuff on here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's going to be hopefully like a more casual setting, but also some really cool stuff that we haven't really seen before on this channel and hopefully not on any other channel. I want to make this unique and find some way to bring a lot of tech into every video that we have coming up. Mm -hmm. All right, should we move over to stories? We've got about five stories lined up. I think, I think it's time. Let's open up the first one. Samsung has leaked the Galaxy Z Fold, no, Z Flip 4, and it's leaked in full. This phone will have a 6.7 inch full HD touchscreen at 120 hertz, so I think it might be up from, I think it's 60 hertz right now, maybe it's, maybe it's 120 still. But 60 hertz, that's great. Mm -hmm. And a 2.1 inch outer display. Yep, bigger than the 1.9 inch one. My big thing with this is Samsung on their current Z Flip, they don't have, um, they don't really have a whole lot of use for it in my opinion. It's just kind of there. There's like not a whole lot of stuff going on on that display that you can really do. Like Moto's Razer, you can actually use that as like a full device just from that outer screen but it's harder to do that on the Samsung just because they don't have many widgets or anything like built in that makes it really that useful. So hopefully Samsung's gonna come up with some better stuff there. That'll be good. And there'll also be three cameras this time. That's also good improvement as there are only two on the last one. So I think hopefully there'll be, oh no, never mind. Still I think two on the back and just one on the front. So that was called three. Never mind. I wish that the Samsung would offer some sort of telephoto lens on the flip, but I kind of get it because of how small it is. So you're probably pretty limited on space, but that's all right, I guess. And still a decent amount of storage, 128 and eight gigs of RAM works with 5G networks. That's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like they just said, now it's not a huge upgrade. It isn't a huge upgrade. I don't see It's not a whole lot of extra stuff onto the current Z flip. What do you think? Seems just like another phone to me, personally. Well, it's a foldable. Fold it's a foldable? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna go and bring that into here and show you. So I don't think he- Oh, it's one of those foldable phones. Yeah, it's one of the folding yeah. ones. That's why I was saying like, it might be tough for Samsung to add like that third camera. It was like Fire once or something. That was a Note 7. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, I know nothing about phones, guys. You know some stuff. You still remember that fiasco? Mm hmm look at that so it just like folds in half Wait, there. so how impactful mm -hmm. is this new phone you would say mm hmm compared to the last one it doesn't look like it's a huge difference really so would you go out of your way to get it then probably not honestly I've I've been wanting a galaxy fold for a little while I even mm -hmm. went on eBay a couple days ago and I was like searching up on there like all right what's a good price for like this kind of stuff and I found a couple good options for like eight hundred nine hundred dollars for the fold three which came out basically a year ago by this point i mean i think it was like july or august that it came out and so it's almost a year old and slightly used like but still good condition but it's half off from like eighteen hundred dollars that's my main my main issue is it's yeah i know you looked up when i, when I said that <laughs> i was like well eighteen hundred is a lot for a phone uh -huh. i'm not willing to spend that much on it some people are that's way too much. 900 mm -hmm. is still pricey in my opinion, but it's, it's, that's more doable given what it's actually bringing to the table. Main reason why I'm not as into the flip though, is just cause I don't really care about how big the phone is. Mm -hmm. I more or less just care about like what it actually brings to the table. Like the flip doesn't really do anything that new. It doesn't bring me any extra functionality really. And I don't really, maybe let me know down in the comments if which one you guys like better because I've always liked the fold a little bit more since it folds out into a tablet. So you kind of have like two devices in one and it kind of gives you a better experience, I guess. And if you're doing a lot of stuff like with two hands, so you can just open it up and have like two hands and like read a book on it or watch like a video. Like it's a better sitting down and just using an experience like that. It's not as good for portability, I guess, since it is like double the thickness. 
Like if you look at Z flips, they are or Z folds. Those things are pretty. Okay, so how heavy is this thing? Let me see. I know it's it's de decently heavy. Like dang. Samsung Z flip. I definitely spelled that wrong. Or Z fold. I know the Z Flip doesn't actually weigh a whole lot, just because it's mostly the same mechanics. Mm -hmm. But, except just with a hinge in it. However, let's see what... Oh, wait, you know, we want to see the weight. But typing is really off today. It's Friday. Blame <laughs> it on that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So yeah, it does have all the good Gorilla Glass Victus. It's all the newest stuff. Aluminum. 271 grams, so... It's a little heavier than most phones, but like probably by about 30, 40 grams. Mm -hmm. So like compare that with like this Galaxy S22. That's kind of what you're looking at. I mean, it's in like that small phone territory. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not a bad weight, you know? And would you mm -hmm. carry that around? Cause I mean, he has, John has an iPhone 8. <laughs> yeah. You, you need to get that. Thing I need replaced. to upgrade soon. So that's why I'm here really, <laughs> because he knows all the tech stuff. Yeah, maybe you can take something away from this. You can hopefully figure out by the end of by the end of the summer. I think you need to purchase mm -hmm. something new. Unless I guess you're gonna get get an iPhone and then you'll wait till like October or whenever they're coming out with stuff. But yeah, speaking of Apple, we do have some Apple news coming up. So Ooh, I'm excited. I love Apple. I know you'll like that kind of stuff. You're interested probably in their next phones mm -hmm. there. So you'll... like whenever I hear Samsung, I just think of like fridges and like their fold phones. Like they're not really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I hope that people like foldable phones though. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's at the point where like people have them in their hands and or like their neighbors have them or a bunch of people have them. That isn't really the case so far. So I think it's kind of difficult for people to get a sense of the benefits that they bring. Well, thing about like the foldable is like how popular is it really? Like it's not too popular right now, but it's I think the sales have gone up by five hundred. 32% I believe it was. Oh wow. Like year over year. Or maybe it was quarter over quarter, but it's Samsung's had a lot of growth with the foldables and I mean, they, that's honestly surprising. Mm -hmm, I know. I mean, they brought down the price of that flip down to 9.99 and $1000 these days honestly, that's like kind of an not an average price for like phones in the US, but mm -hmm. I see a lot of people with like expensive iPhones or expensive Samsungs. And so 999 is kind of in that territory where you might be able to, if, if you like trade in your old device, mm -hmm. you could probably get get it for, I don't know, like seven, $800, which is in range of a lot of iPhones and a lot of like lower end, like Samsung flagship models. So it's getting there. I think the price still has to come down on the fold oh, for definitely. me to be convinced. I mean, 1800 is still kind of outrageous. But do you think it'll actually come down in the future? It has to, it has to come down at some point. Uh -huh. I mean, as they keep on selling more, then it's going to keep on going down. I mean, it started out at 2000 for the first one. Oh. Then I think it went down to 1900 I think it went down to 1900 for the two. And now it's 1800 for the three. Hopefully, like, 1500 for the four. That's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, if it's, like, 1500 or less, then you can maybe consider it. But if it's, like, really mm -hmm. the, like you said, around $1,000 is ideal. That's kind of, like, the sweet spot, honestly. Like, if you were to merge the tablet, like, functionality... And just a regular like phone into one for a thousand dollars, that can make people like if you were to buy an iPad and an iPhone, that would cost you over a thousand dollars easily. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of a well worth an investment. So like, like a two for one deal for a thousand dollars, that would be really good. And then all in your pocket, like you can carry it wherever you are, and you have it at any point, which I think is the biggest mm -hmm. like selling factor of them. It's just that you have all that extra capability with you. <laughs> you can play Angry Birds on it. You can go on a hike oh, and take yeah. like pictures at the same time. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. No, I mean you can do a lot of good multitasking. <laughs> multitasking on that. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see where foldables go. I'm hoping that they that they're here to stay. Mm -hmm. But again, there also are some issues. I guess with Samsung's like ultra thin glass. It had some issues with like cracking every now and then, oh. and also like fingernails can scratch the screen because it's plastic. So it's kind of an issue for right now. I guess with durability. But I mean, if you treat it with like a decent, like a moderate level of care, then it probably should be fine. But I think in order for it to actually grow any further, it needs to be to a point where people can just kind of toss it around and doesn't need to be like babied around. Oh, <laughs> I mean, people can't be like putting it in like a soft case or whatever every day. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to just use it as a phone. 
and for mm-hmm. what it is and not have to worry about the screen getting scratches or the screen cracking spontaneously. Mm-hmm. It's not not what most people want in their phone buying experience. See, that's why I've had my 8 for so long because it's reliable. Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, that's why you have a lot of people have iPhones for a long, long time because they just work for a long time. Well, I think like reliability is another factor. I remember mm-hmm. talking about the the phone. I mean, with foldables, you introduce all the moving parts into it, so that's kind of the topic of like, mm-hmm. is this going to wear out or break at some point? And surprisingly, I haven't heard anything about like hinges breaking. It seems to just be like the screens having like issues or like being like too soft. I haven't heard of like one incident yet personally where, a, where like some sort of a hinge like problem happened or where stuff got inside the hinge or anything like that. Mm-hmm. What but about yeah. like the actual technology? Like the phone itself. Phone itself, I mean, that's about up to date with most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't have to, there's not a whole lot of extra space, I guess, needed for the hinge part of it. It just kind of goes right in the middle of the phone. Mm -hmm. So they're still able to keep like all the processors the same. A little bit smaller of a battery and that flip, I think. So that one could get a little dicey if you needed to be like a power, if you're like a power hungry person. Mm -hmm. There might be some troubles there for you, but then again, you're probably not looking at that phone for it. I mean, is it just as good as a tablet, though? Because since it's like a phone and a tablet at the same time, it might be worse, right? Mm, it could be, yeah. There are problems with, like, scale. Android does not want to scale with, like, anything oh. properly. Like, Instagram hates working on any Android phone, basically. Mm-hmm. And with a Galaxy Fold with, like, the really narrow front screen and the, like, decently wide... Um, like open outer screen it's like kind of like a square aspect ratio mm-hmm. when you look it up like z fold four or three keep on going to project before. on the screen back there oh a little habit see i'm also going to be oh. editing this all on multicam so you'll probably see me cutting around between the screen and other stuff like that mm-hmm. as i'm kind of going Anyways, you can kind of see it does have like a tent mode which oh, I that's think is really cool. cool so like you could have a youtube video playing up top like on this portion of the screen and then down below, like, media controls, like, pause it, play, or skip to the next video. I mean, the thing I see, can that, that act like a keyboard down there? And then that could be, like, a... Some people have done, have done kind of, like, weird stuff like that. Oh, really? Wow. So one person, um, they took it, and they added in, like, a wireless keyboard on top of it. And, or, like, underneath it. So they put that on, like, a stand, kind of like what I have up here. Like, this is, like, just a laptop stand. <laughs> except they took, like, a phone, like, one of these, like, metal phone stands, unfolded it, put the fold up here... And then they were able to take all of like their like Google Docs or whatever and like write out like scripts and stuff on that. So that was I think kind of a cool idea to do. So I mean you probably could in a pinch. I mean it's like mm-hmm. a seven point seven inch screen I believe. So it's a decent size. It's like the size of like a standard iPad. What about the updates for it? Like how many years do you get before it's obsolete? Oh, yeah. I think Samsung's good with like four years mm-hmm. of major updates. So they're. I think they're one of the best right now, like, in that area. I don't know if... Yeah, I don't think even Google comes that close. I think they're going to be that... They're going to be at four years this year with the Pixel 7. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll just have to kind of see. But yeah, Samsung's been killing it, honestly, with the foldables. It's just the price that needs to come down. The price mm-hmm. needs to come down. The durability needs to get a little bit better. And Wait, so in that area, yeah. they don't have any real competitors or anything? That's an issue, Yeah. That's a good point that you brought up because competitors do help to make the phones better when there's better ones out there. Mm-hmm. Oppo has, in my opinion, actually a better phone for folding ones. So it's the Oppo Find Oppo Find N. And unfortunately, it's not sold here in the U.S. So to Samsung, it's like, meh, that's not my problem. It's not Where sold did they sell the thing? I don't know. It's Let me see. I don't even know where it's sold. But all I know is that you can't get it into the U.S., I mean, there are ways to like import it here, obviously, oh, yeah. but it's not really a very polished experience. Let me find it. Oppo's first. Oh, there we go. Yeah, for, as low as fourteen hundred, which is actually even a better price. Mm-hmm. Except you'd have issues, though. I bet with like trying to get it like into the U.S. So I'm sure there'd be high shipping costs there. Mm-hmm. The inner display is a little bit smaller, and the outer display is also a little bit smaller, but. Look how like how wide that is. That's like a normal phone. Right? Honestly, it looks really cool. That and looks wait, do I see three three cameras, right? Three cameras, Instead yeah. Instead of two? Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe a little bit better. We'll have to see. I mean, we'll have to see how well they do with like coloring and like other post-processing. Since Samsung does still do a pretty good job with what they have right now. Mm-hmm. 
And I think the fold still has. It... What's this thing there? Like okay. that the line. I don't. I don't know what cameras are like doing it's these days. Cool. Phones are doing. Oh, I think it just says Oppo on it, so it's just a little bit of text right there, uh, and then the flash. Trying to I look futuristic, I see. Yeah, some phones are like putting in like really big, um, <laughs> like cameras in it, like but they just have like really big like lens areas around them, so it looks like you've got like this giant camera on it, and it's in reality it's just a tiny that's little so sensor. Cheap. Oh my. It's actually found on like a lot of cheap phones. They do that. Oh, okay. So that's probably why. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I think that's enough foldable talk for now. Yeah, let's move on. We'll have lots of foldable news as we start getting closer to too. Now Samsung's we're moving on released. to the beloved Apple. Apple news, yes. The iPhone 14 lineup. Let's head over there and see what's up. All four iPhone 14 models launching later this year will be equipped with 6 gigabytes of RAM. Awesome. 6 gigabytes of RAM on an iPhone goes a long way mm -hmm. that's a lot of memory compared most android phones have eight gigs that's kind of our new standard now i remember when oneplus when they introduced six gigabytes of ram that was a pretty big selling feature just because of how how much better it made the phone experience how much smoother it was so it's good to see that apple's increasing it but i don't even know and they probably they could use more ram if they wanted it mm -hmm. i don't think they necessarily need to have it right now but it just helps them in the long run yeah, so all the Pro models currently, like all the 13s, and I think the 12s too, actually, 12 Pros and Pro Maxes, they both had 6 gigabytes of RAM with it. So they already got that extra upgrade, but it helps out the people that are just buying the standard models. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to keep them for longer. That's good to see. Um, may, ooh, iPhone 14 Pro models may start with 256 gigabytes of storage. Be a nice little upgrade, so you don't have to pay another hundred dollars for to double the storage. That is really good. Wow. Yeah. So Apple's normally not not nice with in that department. But yeah. So let's see. These are all the specs for them right now, so I'm not going to go through it too much. Frame, aluminum, steel. Yeah, looks normal. It all looks normal except for one thing though, which I'm kind of excited about. Oh wait, no, two things I need to talk about. First one I am excited about are the cameras. Rear cameras are finally on the Pro models are gonna get a 48 megapixel main. That will be such an improvement over the 12 megapixel, I think. Because Apple's been sticking with 12 megapixels on their cameras for I think like four or five years. <laughs> They've been using it for no wait, is it the iPhone? Is this since been the iPhone 6S that they've been? It might be even longer. I might have to look that up later because I know that Apple's been using it for quite a long time. You know mm -hmm. what? I'll put something on screen, maybe up here when I'm editing this, of how long they've been using 12 megapixels on their smartphone cameras. Because I think the 48 would definitely improve like some of their like digital zoom quality and also just the overall quality when you like take them. Because they'll do like the process of pixel binning where it kind of mashes them together back down into 12, but it gets it's more information for the phone. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that'll also improve portrait mode video because like all of these phones right or all these videos right now are shot on phones. I'm hoping that one day if I ever get an iPhone or something like that, that I can just shoot them on phones because that does make it really easy. I mean, cameras are nice, but they're also starting to get closer and closer to smartphones. And for photos, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes, but video, you can definitely tell when somebody's using like an actual mirrorless or DSLR camera versus just a smartphone. Mm -hmm. But the iPhones are, they they have the best video quality right now. And they've had that for some time. So I'm hoping the 48 megapixels does something with all that extra data there. Mm -hmm. But I said two two reasons why I'm excited. Well, I guess two not reasons why I'm excited. I guess why I'm maybe a little concerned. The iPhone 14 and the regular 14 Max, which is actually a new model this year. So they got rid of the mini and now you can get a standard version of the iPhone, but a bigger one. So that's nice. So you don't have to upgrade all the way to the Pro that's nice. just to get a bigger screen. The one thing here, though, is what it's running on. It's running an A15 chip versus the A16. So it's going to be running a little bit older of a processor. It's going to be one year older. So hopefully that doesn't mean anything too bad for like the long-term durability of it. But maybe when, with like the extra RAM, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's basically the same chip as last year except for just with two, two gigabytes of extra RAM. Mm -hmm. 
So I hope that's going to be fine and that isn't too much of an issue for some people, but only really time can tell on that one because we'll just have to kind of wait and mm -hmm. see how long we'll get updates for. But that's something to be concerned about in four years. What about the price for the thing? Do you know yet? Well, I think we do have some price leaks. I don't remember them exactly though. Um, I think I think we're starting around eight hundred, I believe. But yeah, I think it's gonna start around eight hundred mm -hmm. still. That's reasonable. Yeah, it's not like the one year where they did iPhone sevens at um, six ninety nine. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah. That was like what they went down a hundred dollars. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna see that for a little bit of time. Especially not with like all the chip shortage stuff going on. I'm sure they're still keeping the prices a little bit higher mm -hmm. than normal. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see on the prices of them as we get a little bit closer. All that stuff will kind of leak. So yeah. overall, is this good news for Apple? Or is it just going to be like every other year? Mm. They're always kind of slow to bring a whole lot of changes back. But you know what? I'm happy for it. 48 megapixels is something that they should have done on the rear camera for mm -hmm. a while. The processor, I'm honestly not too concerned about it because I'm sure they've got it handled. And the A15 is already really good in them, so mm -hmm. I'm sure people, even if they bought the iPhone 14 or 14 Max, I don't think that'd be too big of a problem. Let's go over to the third story of today. iOS 16 and new macOS versions coming out of WWDC this year. WWDC 2022 has been announced. I don't know when. I'm sure the article will say somewhere. I haven't actually paid a whole lot of attention. June 6th at 1 p.m. Eastern or 10 a.m. Pacific. So the same time that they've been doing for a while. Mm -hmm. June 6th, I believe. Oh, that's a Wednesday. They used to do a lot of Tuesday events. So I don't know why they're doing it on Wednesday. But yeah, I don't think we're also going to be seeing any hardware. This article does say, like, perhaps a VR headset. I don't think so. <laughs> Apple with a VR headset this early, I don't think it's coming out. Maybe in October. I mean, what would you think of Apple and a VR headset? Um, Aren't they going against Meta, though, with, like, VR headsets? They kind of would have to, yeah. They'd have to yeah. compete against them. I don't know if that's an I think it would be it. too early for them, then, because Apple, they like their products to be perfect, right? So yeah. they're probably going to wait until October. I mean, we've never heard them come out with, like, any VR headset or AR headset or anything mm -hmm. like that, so... Like, stuff like that takes time to develop. Yeah. And they like to get things where to the point where it's good for all the consumers and people like them. Mm -hmm. It's all polished. I don't know if that's going to happen like that, like this. So Yeah, knowing Apple, they're not going to be quick to release it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just have to probably wait on that. I don't think that part of it's going to take place. But could get a new coat of paint. And better notifications. Better notifications, I think, would be better. Yeah, you know, I mean, better notifications are better. <laughs> but they have weird ways apple has weird ways of like categorizing them in my opinion mm -hmm. i mean how do you i don't use an iphone on the regular so what do you think about notifications are they fine or do you feel like they're kind of like mixed together weird or like they could do a better or like job? the new widget or like just notifications like are they kind of i feel like people have complained in the past about them like i mean they all show up there but they're just kind of unorganized or like different priorities or in like weird places yeah, it's kind of funky sometimes yeah I mean, I'm hoping that, yeah, hopefully the notifications get a little bit better, but mm -hmm. we'll see. I That's mean, I'm still saying. fine with it, but there's definitely room to improve for Apple. Yeah. I mean, what, what parts do you not like about the notifications, though, mainly? Is it just, like, the layout of, like, priorities in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they're saying the improvements will come there. I'm pr pretty sure that they'll come. I mean, it's iOS 16, so they've had 16 iterations now to come <laughs> Come up with something better for it or another yeah. one to not come up with something better oh and they're going to be working on focus modes we we're talking about that the other day at lunch we were trying to like set up your focus mode so every time you get to school it oh yeah like silences but then outside of school it'll unsilence or whatever so you can actually get calls and stuff and i don't have to call you like multiple times in order for it to actually go through mm -hmm. that would be nice so you know, focus mode has been really helpful so far. Yeah. I mean, improvements to that, I'll take it, yeah. And it does, they do have a feature on the Mac for focus modes, except I wish that there was some way to integrate it with Android because I like, I use a Mac, like on, like personally I use a Mac, but then I also use an Android phone for regular use. So I wish that there was some way to kind of blend the two together. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful, but, and to have like, when I turn on the focus mode here, it turns on my 
Android phone, but thus that is not an option yet. So they're not as compatible still? No. No. I mean, you know what? It works, though, for the most part. I'm still happy with the decision I made to get this mm -hmm. over, like, a Windows PC, but yeah, it's, it's all right. There are some times that it gets a little bit annoying. Like, no AirDrop. That's one I don't like at my school because those computers have, like, admin locks on them, so I can't download new software. So I can't get the Android file transfer app, which is the only way to move files from an Android phone onto a Mac. So I basically just don't take photos on that phone because then I have a lot of trouble getting it onto the school computers and like the iMacs that we have there. So I'm borrowing a lot of iPhones. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, let's see, dynamic status bar. That could be kind of cool. I don't know what that would mean. So I guess it would like change around depending on what stuff or content you're, I guess you're looking at. Oh, and if they're doing a weird thing with the screen with like the pill and the like cutout, John doesn't know what I'm talking about probably. No, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm gonna have to show him real quick. There we go. iPhone 14 screen. There we go. Now you can see this. Oh, the black thing at the top. Yeah, so they're just gonna have that little like camera cutout. Instead of it just being like a big notch on the Pro models, that's what it's supposed to be. Hmm. So it could be kind of a cool, cool one. And maybe that's why they're doing that dynamic status bar is because they have a little extra room now. So maybe they can kind of play around with that extra space and do something cool with it. Yeah, I still think that the I think the 14s are still going to be on the notch, though. So mm -hmm. we'll see if that like um, software change applies to both then. And I'm sure there'll be uh, stuff for watches, like watch OS. All right, well, I think that's about it for this article on Apple. We just have two more to go through, so we are just going to quickly get through these as it's starting to get later and later in the evening. Mm -hmm. want to get this uploaded to you guys and get some feedback on it because I do want suggestions. So please, if there's anything better that we can do, even the setup of all this, we, we spent probably about a half hour like moving around the desk and these chairs trying to figure out how we can arrange this in the best spot. That was a waste of time as <laughs> we just put it back into the same spot we started. And I mean, we figured out that this is the best spot though. So Yeah. So I mean, if you guys do have any other suggestions, though, please let us know because we are kind of desperate well i'm desperate for that uh -huh. i have no stake in this at all he has no stake he's <laughs> just along for the ride yep seeing what we're doing all right let's open up the next story for bmw they're announcing that their latest vehicles can be unlocked with your iphone in your pocket previously you'd have to take the iphone i believe and hold it up to the door which looks a little bit odd but it'll be starting out with their new ix1 suv which again that's like Going into the car videos only Friday, only Fridays that we wanted to do. I mean, it's obviously not going to be this Friday or for the next couple of weeks, but I really want to get in and be able to like test out some of those things. That sounds pretty cool to have your phone as the key for that, but like being able to share the pass between like different iPhones. That's some cool stuff. So we'll be working on iPhones with digital, yeah, you know, with the digital key mode and iPhones that have NFC on them. So I don't know what that means for like which ones have it or not. Like I know 12s do, 12s and 13s do. Yeah, it's yeah. not something I would have expected. No, I mean they did like a couple of partnerships in last year, last year or the year mm -hmm. before in like 2020 with like the BMWs too to get like key keyless stuff. Can you see Samsung working with other vehicle manufacturers? I don't really just cuz of with Android, that's the thing. Is with Android, you have to like adapt it for all phones oh. that use Android. So it's a little bit tougher. So it's like, all right, it's gonna work on. It's got to work on like a Huawei. Well, not that anymore. They're not here in the U.S. Um, it's got to work on a Samsung, a OnePlus, a Motorola, or like all mm -hmm. those different kinds of phones. And so, in order to work on all of those, that's kind of something that they would have to come to an agreement on. Or maybe it's just something that comes in with Google Pay. So Google Pay has some, some sort of agreement with them, but we haven't seen that yet. And same also with like the virtual driver's license thing. I thought that was a pretty cool idea because that would be nice when then I don't have to take my wallet with me every time I drive. And then imagine not having to take your key with you. So all you take is your phone when you leave the house. Mm -hmm. And that gives you access to your payments on Apple Pay, your car key also in like stored in your Apple wallet, and then maybe even your house key too. If you have like an August smart locker, one of those like 
lots of like keypads and stuff on them. So that could all be pretty, pretty cool stuff. We'll kind of have to see what comes out, but that sounds like a cool partnership. But that would be a lot of fun to test drive the X1 or the iX1. Because then, yeah, the X one's already out. It's like a gas one, but they had like an iX1. That'd be pretty cool to go and drive and to get to see all the tech inside because those things look pretty cool. Except for the, for the front of them. I don't know what BMW is doing with the design. It doesn't look the greatest, in my opinion. Like the grill is awfully big. Like the iX4. I'll search up that right now. The iX4 is kind of a weird grill, in my opinion. It's just it's just big. Mm, that that is ridiculous. It's so silly. Yeah. It's a weird look for me. <laughs> Why would they still, do that? They're still keeping it. It looks like it has a mustache or something. <laughs> like a, like look two eyes it. and a mustache. <laughs> it's so smile. weird. Or maybe that's, it's like, like nostrils. Like that's her nose. It's kind of like a waffle as well. A waffle. Uh, yeah, it's... I don't know. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, okay. Thing. It's definitely a mustache. Yeah. Mustache or nostrils, one of those two. Yeah, I'm saying mustache, like that would be the mouth there. I can kind of see, yeah, I can kind of see that. That would make the car look so angry though. Yeah, except they don't need a grill though. I don't know why so many car makers still do that. But, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess they kind of have like a legacy or like some sort of image to uphold because that's what they've always had. So how do you kind of keep that same design language there? Mm -hmm. Versus, images like, change over time though. Like, yeah, I'm hoping that that one changes. Yeah, it does not look good. Yeah. I, mean, I could oversee it though. I've had some good tech. Oh, okay. Yeah. We made it to the bolt, right? We made it to the bolt. The last story. This one, Oscar should hopefully like it. Mm -hmm. He drives the bolt every day. But it yes. looks just like his. Well, actually, that one's the older one that they're showing in this oh, article. Oh, really? Yeah. There, there's actually a newer one. I'll go and pull it up real quick. Um, let me see. Chevy Bolt. I like the EUV, honestly. There's an EUV and just a regular EV. The EV looks more like a crossover. This one, so. doesn't that look kind of, kind of nice? Mm -hmm. So this one's the, this, yeah. This is the regular Bolt. That's the EUV. Okay, definitely that one. That definitely one looks the kind of strange. That one, just, it's the front that's just like a little odd. It's just kind of like, I don't know. It's, uh -huh. Maybe it's a little too short. It looks like kind of like a Tesla though on this side. Yeah. I could see that a little bit on the EV at least. Yeah. Yeah. So the door handle still has door handles though, so I don't know. But I mean, it, you see how they don't have a grill though, like the BMW. <laughs> that one was, yeah. I wish that like the fake grill is kind of like trend right now. I wish that. Was... <laughs> so There's you don't no need point a... in it. There's no point. You don't need to like intake any oxygen or whatever for um, the engine. All you need is any like little bit of like HVAC stuff. Yeah. Anyways, the whole story with the bolt. Now we'll stop talking about the grills. It's that it's starting at twenty six thousand five hundred ninety five dollars in the U S. Wow. That I think is one of the cheapest vehicles or electric vehicles that you can buy here in the U S. That's so that has like a good range. All right. Well, I think this is about it for the show today. We're going to call it a night or a or a wrap. We'll call it a wrap for the end of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're gonna call it because this is going out the next day. It's not live. We could do a live show one day. Not yeah. for now. Definitely in the future, though. Yeah, definitely sometime in the future, I would like to do a live version. That would be pretty fun. And then we could actually have all the viewers interacting. Mm -hmm. Maybe get, like, a chat log or something. But again, we need to figure out this whole, like, setup. Because that will be a whole another issue of how do we see, like, the chat real time? How do we adjust all the screens and all the views at the same time? Mm -hmm. So that's a different problem, but... I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it or found it helpful or useful in any way. I don't think it's really as much of a useful show, but I think it might be kind of just a fun way to chat with us and uh, get a little bit of insight on some of our thoughts on the latest news. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Tech Device News.